Welcome to the Saturday morning wake-up call right here on KFAR. Of course, it is the far north tactical Saturday morning wake-up call, being as they are the ones who make this program possible. It's kind of like an infomercial, really, if you think about it. And the uh, the folks here, uh, Far North Tactical and uh, Bighorn Enterprises, they they pay for the airtime, but they actually buy the entire hour. So it's not simply a matter of we're going to come in here and do a show and sell some advertising. They actually pay for the air. So this is uh, this is their show, and that's what this is all about. Joining me today from Bighorn Enterprises, we have uh, Josh Bennett in the studio here with us. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. It's uh, free air for me today, huh? Well, At least the first hour. Oh, because your brother is supposed to be the one taking care of I stuff here from far north. Is he? Uh, I think he's being really tactical today. Yeah. Kind of like <laughs> sneaking in. Sneaking yeah, in. Exactly. He's going uh, stealth mode. Of course, it is a little chilly out there this morning. Maybe things uh, didn't froze, start. Froze up for on him and something. So yeah. He is really good at having his truck not <laughs> not start. Well, that, that is one of those things that happens this time of year. So I mean, and I that's can't... usually when he's got to go to work, though, not right. come to the show. So that's odd. Well, either way, I mean, the show is work in a sense, isn't it? <laughs> of course, uh, maybe <laughs> yeah. maybe for you it's just fun. Maybe it's just a play thing. But... Wee! <laughs> All right. Uh, do you, what, where do you want to go with this hour? Do you want to talk about uh, Red Dawn? Do you want to talk about the coming well, we've invasion? got to start at least to give a good prop for the movie. I went and saw it yesterday and... I really, I was a kid, I think I was about 9 or 10, 10, 11 when the first one came out. And my best friend and I overly idolized it probably. We watched it too many times and uh, loved it. Loved that show oh, so Wolverine. much. <laughs> so I saw the new one yesterday and unfortunately I read some reviews about it, which you just should, don't read reviews. They're... Those guys are jerks. They don't understand anything. Didn't see a, one good review, but it was pretty good. It had a little more. It had more language foul, on the foul side than the first one did for sure. Man, it was it was good. The overall theme theme was the same. They kept some of the you know the sequences that happened in the first one happened in the second one, and they twisted them a little bit, made them just a little bit different, so it was its own movie. You know. It was no, fun. For anybody who's not familiar, the the original Red Dawn was... Turn off the, the radio, because I don't want you listening to this show. That's all. What's if that? You, if you haven't watched Red Dawn... If you haven't, if you haven't seen the original Red Dawn, you shouldn't, you're shouldn't. you not allowed to listen uh-huh. to uh, the Patriots Lament and uh, the Saturday morning wake-up call. Wow, that's pretty strong. Right I there. had a friend yesterday that's no longer my friend today, because I found out he's not watched the original. <laughs> I have, wow. I have two little deals, like no gun, no friend. Well, I also have no watch... First friend, non, no friend. <laughs> That's kind of messed up. What if somebody wants to, and they just have never? Oh, we can be maybe, friends after the friend. So just wait and go go out and see the movie. Uh, but the the original one dealt with the possibility of a Soviet invasion of America, and basically under the premise that we would not fire nukes if we were invaded, that we would actually uh, that we would get invaded, that we would be overrun, and that the Soviets would take over. And I remember in the first one, it wasn't just the Soviets, there was also the Cubans mm-hmm. that, that were involved. Now, this time around, obviously, the Soviet Union's not our enemy. i got to put the air quotes up for that one. Right. And move my little my rabbit ears with my fingers. Uh, so the main enemy this time around is what, the Chinese? Or the no, Cor- that's the North Koreans, North Koreans which is kind of interesting. It's the North Koreans, okay. Because, oh, oh, he's my friend again. He just texted me that he watched it at 2 o'clock this morning. Nice. Wow. Good. All right. All right. Welcome back to the fold. I now yeah. have three friends again. Okay. I only had two. <laughs> you also got a few. Now you also got all four lines uh, lit That's up. That's weird. So, what uh, is the problem there? No one calls this quick. Well, I suppose we, it's Aaron spamming our phone lines. Yeah. Or it could be having something, something to do with the North Korean invasion, which incidentally is something that I have been talking about on Problem Call oh, for yes, you have. how many? I mean, how, for years, I've been talking about the possibility that the North Koreans, since they've already got a screw loose. Anyway, they might decide to just go ahead and break the screw off and come try to take what they want. I don't think they could dream of invading us because I don't think they have enough fuel to even drive on their three miles of road that they have paved over there. But they do have enough oomspa to launch a missile. They could launch a missile. And and now here's something else to think about, not just for the North Koreans, but also with the Chinese. They are small little people. You can put an awful lot of them into a submarine, brother. (laughs) That's a good point. Hmm. Just a submarine full of North Koreans. 
on popping the, up on the, <laughs> off of the coast. <laughs> Three million of them. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, the one the of the, hate, let the hate man begin. <laughs> one of the things about the movie that was kind of funny was that it was the North Koreans that that uh, invade. Well, the Russians take over the Eastern Seaboard, of course. So they're still our enemies, which is good. And whoops, the uh, I guess they filmed this thing and then they shelved it for a while because MGM wasn't doing good enough to distribute or whatever. And after the fact, they changed all all the stuff originally was the Chinese invasion but then they started doing some studying and whatever and decided that the China that China was a good market for this movie so they swapped all the insignias and everything digitally and turned them into North Koreans and they changed the dialect dial, or uh, yeah the language and everything because they don't speak English because they're Koreans and they don't speak Chinese because they're Korean so they had to change all that Anyways, it's good enough to go see. Go see it. Let's talk about something. All right. Anything else? So let's uh, go to the phones. Do you want to do that? Phones? Go to the phones? Yeah. Go for a walk? All right. That's weird. <laughs> okay. 458-TALK is the number. weird. Good see? morning. There's one, two, three, <laughs> four. All right. We got spammed. I we love it. We have a Red Dawn hater yeah, out that's there. That's right. Well, it's not, maybe it's not that. Maybe it's a North Korean lover. Could be a North Never Korean, thought about no, that. Could be a North Korean agent out there who's trying to do their very own denial of service attack on our phone lines. No? Maybe someone that works for I don't know. Disney that doesn't like MGM. All right. Well here's here's something I'd like to give you to uh, as a possibility to talk about here. Uh, Anchorage police cracking down on this weekend, the, the long weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, on drunk and impaired drivers. They have extra officers on the streets down there this weekend because of a federal grant. Now, this is my favorite because uh, the same kind of thing has happened here in Fairbanks where we got extra officers for traffic violations from a grant. And therefore, uh, the police chief is like, look, you got to be doing your job. You are here to enforce traffic laws. You need to be doing X amount, X number of traffic stops each and every week or else you are going to be in violation of our, our grant stuff. So... Uh, we have the same kind of thing happening here in Fairbanks, but down in Anchorage specifically for the weekend, they're out there looking for drunk drivers. And yeah, I don't know if you see the phrase in there. I, might, I should have highlighted it before I gave you the paper. It says they're encouraging, encouraging drivers who witness what they think to be a drunk driver to call police. To use their cell phones to report it. It doesn't even say call. It says use, use their your cell phone. phone. You could actually text. Well, I, I mean, if you're, you know, <laughs> well, even I mean, if you look at it, like on Elmendorf and Eilson and Fort Wainwright, uh-huh. you can't even use your cell phone. Oh no! And you're driving. I and you try to do that. You'll you'll go to jail for that. They'll put you in a cage for that. <laughs> they definitely will pull you over and give you a ticket. They'll, so they'll do it twice. So I mean, I mean, there's a couple of different problems that I'm having with this. Uh, first of all, is the taking of federal money specifically to come out and enforce laws, lo- well, in this case, local laws, but laws which pretty much you haven't done anything. To hurt anyone else, you just might hurt somebody. Therefore, we're going to get you off the streets before you do. That's that's the first problem I'm having. Second problem is the fact that they are out there encouraging people to report on their neighbor. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically, hey, uh, we don't. There aren't enough police for us to have one on every street corner, so we're going to deputize everybody, and so everybody now becomes a snitch. And, in fact, in some cases, if you don't report a crime, if you see it committed, can you also be charged for not reporting oh, the crime yeah. that, you, that, that you've out. witnessed? Was that last week? Yeah. 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 So, wow. I, so, I mean, there's that. And then the third problem is that they are basically encouraging other people to break the law. I mean, like, like in this case, use your cell phones to report <laughs> this crime of somebody driving impaired, which now that person, I mean, if a cop sees you pulling out your phone... While you're driving, now you can get pulled over sure. yourself. Driving while distracted. Mm-hmm. Wow. What a bunch of poo-poo. So I, I, I saw that story, and I'm, th- I'm thinking to myself, now this is right up the alley of Patriot's Lament, because this is the kind of thing that we've been talking about. You know, this little document right here, I'm holding up to you. This is, uh, Const- this is my constipation. Constipated? No, yeah, exactly. United, this United, is the United States, States of constipation. <laughs> Well, this, they need a flushing. Yeah, this document right here, the Constitution, doesn't mean a hill of beans. Nope. 
No. Uh, and and people no. who uh, and, and we've had callers not just on this show but on my show and I, even on Michael Duke's show where people say, oh, we're guaranteed in the Constitution, and then whatever X Y Z they <laughs> think they have for a right. You do not have any rights. You do not have a single right. All of these rights that are supposed to be guaranteed to you in the Constitution, you don't have. Yeah, even the rights that were in there were only guaranteed to you if you basically enforced it Mm -hmm. yourself. Yourself. I mean, that's all it comes down to. It it has nothing to do with them protecting anything. I mean, government, by its own existence, will not protect your rights. Which is why the Bill of Rights... to exist. Why the Bill of Rights was put in in the first place is because the founders or the framers of the Constitution were looking at it and saying, you know what? There's <laughs> yeah. too much power here. We need to make sure that we are that we delineate yep. that Congress shall make no law. And yet Congress has made. Law. I, I mean, every single one. Every single one of the Bill of Rights. Every single one of those first ten amendments has been abrogated. Yeah, you know what I don't like about... One of the things that bugs me about these things with uh, the federal grant money is encouraging the police officers, just like with the city um, chief a while back, a couple weeks ago, encouraging them basically to do their job even better. Mm -hmm. You know, get out there and get not bad guys. That's the part I don't like Mm -hmm. about it. It's go get the citizens. You need go find you need to go find more citizens. Yeah. It, to arrest. Do you remember when? They are. Remember when I had the police chief here on the radio? Uh, actually, unfortunately, interviewed him oh, yeah. and and Councilwoman uh, Cyber yep. before she was off the. Uh, I'd the be member. Had oh, them both. She had voted off. Uh, no, or she didn't I, run. I think she. Yeah, I think she's uh, term limited out or something even possible. Anyway, had the two of them in here and and we were guaranteed that the police would not pull you over. Unless they had a reason. <laughs> right. That they still had a probable cause or they, something, right? There's, that they're not going <laughs> to just be pulling you over for no reason. They have to have... But everybody knows... The probable cause book is 10 feet tall. There is nothing... You cannot drive no. without giving them probable cause. Uh-uh. You can, I mean, especially in the wintertime here in Alaska. When is the last time you stayed completely within your lane when you made a, a right turn? I mean, you think about the piles of snow. Ooh. You're gonna, you are going to drift into the other lanes. That was a long, yeah, lot of I mean, years ago. I mean, even even when you can see the lines, <laughs> yeah. it's hard to do with the, with the tight corners, especially if you drive something like I do with a suburban. I realized yeah. that I'm not sure how I've not seen it, but at the end of our drive, there's a stop sign, mm-hmm. like a state stop sign. That's mm. on your driveway. You are the only people that live on that road. Correct. And we have a stop sign. And I four years times wow. There's a lot of uh, drive not stopping at mm-hmm. least a thousand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now you now you are just admitted, I admitted to I'm, breaking the law publicly, and so everybody who can hear our voice is now call. bound bound to call and report you. They should call that I have. I think they're all spammers. Yeah, we might we might have spammers. You want to run through it real quick sure. here just to see. Yeah, we got spams again. You know, that yeah. takes a lot of effort. Hmm? It takes a lot of effort to keep dialing. I wonder what... <laughs> well, I mean, there, 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 there are certain people that me. are disturbed mentally that, you know, don't have a life, and uh, all they really can do is to uh, sit by the phone and, and try to block anybody else from getting through. Well, it's just funny that you would take the effort to do that at nine o'clock in the morning on, on a Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. At least if you or disagree or don't like us, call in and talk to us because that's way more fun. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Tony. Tony, go ahead. What's Are on you your mind? Are you our spammer? No, I don't think he is our spammer because I I, <laughs> I I got him in here before anything. Oh, okay. Tony, no, what's I'm on, not a spammer. T- Tony, what's on your mind? Hey, no, I, I just heard you made a comment the other day about the Alex Jones show and how we got to get our tinfoil hats out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you were completely accurate because some of the stuff I agree with some of the stuff he says, but I also agree with some of the stuff that you guys say. But well, I'm, I know. I, I agree with some of the stuff that Alex says, too. I mean, there's some things that he does I, a great I also job agree with. with some of the stuff we say here, too, which is... Uh, <laughs> I agree with myself about 90, 80% of the time. But, I mean, he is kind of a... He does kind of jump on the... Um, excitable, fascinating. But the thing is, he doesn't sound much different than you guys do. Have, have you ever sat and listened to him? Oh, yeah. Yep. The he gets a little bit further off on uh, um, 
conspiracy yeah, theories. I, I think one of the chief differences between the things that Josh and Aaron say on this program and that I say on Problem Corner that's different from what we, we see from Alex Jones is that we don't believe, at least I certainly don't believe, that there is some kind of a cabal, some international cabal that is trying to kill us all. <laughs> like like Alex Jones does. I I believe that I'm personally and and Josh, you know, feel free to jump in on this too. But I I really think that the big issue is that people are sheep and that people do not stand up for themselves or for their neighbors and people do not exercise the rights that we're supposed to have, you know, from the the right of, you know, free speech to the right not to get searched and not to be thrown in a cage. We don't exercise it. We just go along with whatever somebody says the law is. And that that is one of the biggest problems is that we have, by ourselves, we have given up the rights of our founders. We have yeah. gone along with, we have asked people to pass laws like we need to get rid of, we need to make, we need to ban texting. We have done that to ourselves. Whereas no, Alex, I agree. Whereas Alex agree. Jones We've believes that this is some kind of a, a conspiracy to try to put us all in cages. I, I, uh, he, he does, I mean, I've, I've gone on uh, InfoWars. He's got some good articles on there. Some of them. I've read though, you can search them and yeah, they're not true. Mm-hmm. But that's fine. I mean, he's just throwing info. He's just throwing information out. Freedom the only speech, thing, right? yeah, the only thing that maybe it's not him so much, but I just know, have known in the past certain people that live listening to him. First thing they do when they wake up, they hit Alex Jones. They listen to every podcast, every, and they're like, we're all dead. Um, I guess that's part of it. It's not necessarily him. It's some people that I know that have listened to him, and we're just dead. There's no point in living because the world's going to end either the Illuminati, the uh, Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, or aliens. One of them is going to kill us all. <laughs> and I believe there is a Trilateral Commission, because there is. There's a by, uh, Council on Foreign Relations. I believe there was an Illuminati group. There is an Illuminati group, all that. I just uh, think that at the same time that they're they're actually all people also, so they're fallible. Right. They're not but... uh, perfect, and they can't – not everything they want to happen can just automatically happen. Right, but I digress back to a lot of the things that he says and you guys say sound a lot alike. Uh, and, and my yeah. example of this is just this morning you guys are talking about how the cops are out to get everybody. Are you kidding me? Really? They don't have nothing better to do? Well, no, we were reading specifically. Yeah, specifically. A press, a press, from, no, from, I know, I know. I, heard, I read up all on the uh, on the eight stops, eight mandatory stops or whatever. That's... That's that's just a policy that their that their chief is putting out there. It doesn't mean these guys. It's to get these these guys that aren't making these traffic stops that are stuck in the office all day. It, right. It's, it's to get them out there. To get them out and making contact with the public. It isn't to go out there and and uh, uh, dig into your rights and all other stuff. Take your rights away. They just want they, they want these guys out there making contact with the public. I okay. Here's where we might. I don't want them out there making contact with me. I want them to leave me alone. Period. I don't want well, to hear. I don't want a chief of police saying you must make blah blah blah. I mean, it was okay. Let's just let's just draw. Leave it at it was bad PR right. to come on and say a quota this and that. The quota and, is not a quota. Is and I understand there exactly, was exactly, and that's, that's I, not correct. I know there was some underlying stuff there where I believe he was having some issues um, union wise or some lazy dudes. I understand that. Yep. We we jumped on him pretty good, <laughs> but he said the word quota, and the whole point was, you know, that's unconstitutional. So let's right. just keep everything above board. And I haven't been pulled over in a long time. The last time I was, I think it was in Nanana even, and it was a right. state trooper. The guy was great. Even apologized. I'm sorry that you were going over the speed limit, but and. Uh, I've been pulled over here, or in contact with the local police, and have had above-board interactions with all of them. Never, the only one that I had didn't, well, I didn't even have a Mm -hmm. bad interaction with him, I just don't like the guy, was a fish and game guy out in Bristol Bay, but whatever. And he's actually stationed here now. (laughs) Right. I saw him the other day. But anyways, the... uh, And keep in mind, too, that uh, that this conversation today did not start on on the Fairbanks police. It started with the, uh, with the, the grant that was given to Anchorage police specifically to go out there and get drunk drivers during Thanksgiving weekend, and they are encouraging the public to call in. 
as and, as they should. And really, but would you want? Would you want? Would you want your wife, your kids, anybody that you love, get smoked by a drunk driver? Nobody does. No, and that's the whole. That's the whole purpose of the program was just to keep people's keep people aware. Well, if I wanted to keep my family safe, then wouldn't the best thing I should do is just keep them at home and not allow them to go out at all? Well, why would you do that? That's a good question. (laughs) Why would (laughs) I do that? I think part of the, uh, maybe taking it to the extreme, but at the the same time, the extreme has happened a lot. History's shown us over and over and over. It's a slippery slope when law enforcement, I mean... Maybe not so much the local, but look at the national with this uh, see, some, see something, say something. I mean, yep. that is just like almost smack dab out of the Gestapo book. When you turn your mom and dad in, your neighbors, and the Soviets were fantastic at it. Where the North kids, Koreans are still very good yeah. at it, so are the yeah. Chinese. And we're just pointing out, and maybe we go over, okay, we go over. <laughs> no doubt about it. We have fun with mm-hmm. it sometimes. Maybe too much fun. But... I guess what we try to do personally, I'm trying to mm-hmm. show that okay, this is a slippery slope, folks. This okay, if I see a guy getting murdered, first off, I hope I go do something about it because I you. usually have a weapon, mm-hmm. and I'm going to, I feel obligated, absolutely, absolutely obligated to protect my neighbor, and everyone's my neighbor. I mean, the Bible tells me that. Who's your neighbor? Well, the Samaritan mm-hmm. and the we know that story. Even and, the Fairbanks police are your neighbors. Right, and mm-hmm. if I see um, somebody beating up a little kid, I'm going to go put a stop to it. not necessarily going to go shoot a guy over that, but I would put a stop to it. And if I couldn't, he would either use assistance around me, and I wouldn't hesitate mm-hmm. eventually to call a police officer like, hey, look, someone's breaking into that home. I probably should not. There's four guys. I probably not in my best interest or anyone in that mm-hmm. home to go start shooting everyone. I'll call the police. And I'm, we're not anti um, peace officers. I know. At all. We are a little bit we more are. anti-law enforcement, mm-hmm. when, and it's not even the officer's fault so much as the, the legislature that passes unrealistic laws nonstop and puts law peace officers in jeopardy over the silliest things. Text, in my like opinion. Texting or, you know, we, we need to make sure that people aren't speeding. They aren't going two or three miles over the limit. Well, really? look, at, look at how many times you've seen where an officer has been shot from a traffic stop or whatever. And this has just gone through my mind just for my own sake, my own curiosity, I think. I wonder what the original traffic stop was. And obviously the guy was a bad guy because why do you <laughs> – I got pulled over and I shot a guy. That's not <clears> – that's wrong. But – crap i hope he didn't pull him over because he had a tail light out and got shot over a tail light or i hope he didn't see the guy texting and he he's obligated to pull him over because he is breaking the has, law and he is taking an oath to follow that to uphold the law so i mean that's that's part of it it's kind of just let's pull ourselves out of the insanity a little bit let's do a Let's put on the brakes and do a, a double take. Let's rethink. Why do we have so many laws? Why do we put law enforcement into so many situations to jeopardize their lives? Why do we tell? Why do we come to the point where we tell each other to turn in your neighbor? I mean, I just don't like that. I don't like people breaking the law. You know, the do everything you say you will do and don't aggress on anyone's person or property. I believe that should be upheld 100%. But I just don't like the slippery slope that has happened. And I don't believe in, oh, it can't happen in America because yeah. mm-hmm. look at where we've come it's from happening right now. 50 years ago, mm-hmm. 100 years ago, 150 years ago. We are digressing into very immoral, very unethical people, unfortunately. And it just scares me, especially when I see the TSA, the things that they're doing. Man, I think that stuff is wrong, some of the things that they're doing. It's not right. So when we say things about that, it's just wake up. Let's not slide down that slope, or at least let's be um, mindful of what can happen or what can occur. And on both sides, law enforcement and the uh, um, citizen side. I hope that law enforcement thinks about these things also. And like, man, you know, this could turn into... Whatever, I don't know what situation you can turn into because I'm not Alex Jones. <laughs> but you know, do I, am I coming across at all? Because I'm kind of blathering on, but it's not. 
I don't know. We we definitely aren't against the law enforcement people. I don't. No, I'd like to. I'd like to engage you in further conversation, but my wife says I got to go to a commercial break. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> funny, funny you should say that because so do we. All, All right. right. Take care. <laughs> All right. Good, good show. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for, for calling call. in. Oh, All call. right. Uh, if there are actually people on hold here, we're going to check it. Otherwise, we're getting spammed again. I love having conversations with people. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. 458-TALK is the number if you want to have a conversation with us. We'll clear the lines here in just a moment. You've got it on Local Talk Radio, KFAR Online, KFAR660.com, and on your smartphone, if your phone is smart, with the TuneIn Radio app, which Mine's is smarter than I am. Which is free. That, my friend, I believe. Welcome back to Nottingham. You've got it on... Uh, <laughs> KFAR, it Local is. Talk Radio, and this is the uh, Far North Tactical Saturday morning wake-up call. Uh, joining me in the studio this morning from uh, Bighorn Enterprises, it is Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. All right. Do you want to go back to the phones, or do you want to go someplace else from where we've been so Yeah, far? we could. You know, I, real quick, mm-hmm. I realized, I was listening to this, the radio off and on this last week, we never said Happy Thanksgiving last week. You know what? That's true. We're That's bad. We're pretty pathetic. We didn't even... Wish the people that spend that actually get up at nine o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. on a Saturday, happy Thanksgiving. So happy belated, and just to make sure we don't forget, Merry Christmas <laughs> and a Happy New Year. Oh, what about Martin Luther King Day? I mean, you're gonna just throw all these holidays and Happy President's Day. Yeah. Did we hit veterans? Uh, well, vet, no, I'm. You know what? I uh, think you might have mentioned uh, Armistice. Yeah, that's right. Which is really an interest, man. I just went about went down a you big rabbit hole. You almost got down that rabbit hole right fell there. Into it. You're like a hound dog. No, no. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, boy. Let's stay on, stay on, stay let's, on the track here. Let's go back with just real quick about the law enforcement thing. With uh, Just to make a quick point. I do believe that we are, and I may be wrong, but I, uh, the guys that I read, whatever, I believe in uh, Austrian economics and... The Peter Schiff's, um, Ron Paul's, he's not just a politician. The guy is a brilliant economist. And the guys that have called the bubbles in the past, like um, the tech bubble, the dot .net, dot .com bubble, I guess, um, the housing bubble, these guys called these things years in advance. They said, this is a bubble, it's going to collapse, and we're going to have huge losses of wealth, loss of monetary gains, blah, 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 because of these um, business cycles, which is basically where people invest money in somewhere that's artificially inflated by the government. And they're saying that we are on the eclipse, not this fiscal fiscal cliff that the uh, politicians talk about. I mean, because that's just, that's peanuts compared to the actual debt. And I do believe that we are on a real fiscal cliff that we could have a financial collapse, like the dollar is going to be gone. And this community is going to suffer from it, I believe, because not very many people have prepared for it. I'm not talking about like being a doomsday prepper. I mean, people don't even have, you know, from a strike. Let's just say hostess is out of business mm-hmm. now. How many Twinkies do you have saved up in your in your basement, in your garage, under your pillow? Very few, probably. Mm-hmm. I've eaten all my hostess Twinkies. I, I didn't Thinking realize. that I would never run out. You know what? I actually thought I was going to have time after I heard they were going out of business to go out and get myself some Twinkies. And they're gone. They're gone. I And, and I, I mean, I was I, I asked one of the, the store owners, you know, well, well, what are we going to do? And they said, we should be getting at least a couple more shipments in before they're completely out of business. So I went back in the day that they got the shipment in. No Twinkies. But I did manage to get myself some cupcakes. Any ho-hos? No, you know what? I zingers? saw. I, there were some zingers, and you know what? We actually managed to stockpile some zingers before Good. because you know those are. I was but debating on whether I was going to come back it's, to it's, Bible study or not. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's we do we do have some zingers for the okay, next time good. you're Bible study. Uh, the the thing is, I mean obviously for anybody who's not reading between the lines, this is real about hostess going out of business. But mm-hmm. what if it's bullets? What if it is rice? What if it is beans? Very recently we had the. Um, the boys, um, longshoremen, they went on strike. And I remember, what was that, eight years ago? Things actually disappeared off the shelves pretty quick. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is we have three days' worth of food in, at any given time at the supermarkets here. I mean, that's a fact. If, let's just say, 
shipments quit coming, a hurricane, a some kind of disaster, an economic collapse, monetary collapse. We have exactly three days worth of food for the people that live here on the shelves. In three days, well, I don't think it'd take three days. I think in about three hours, it's gone. Well, that's what happened on the Friday that they announced Osos was going out of business. That very same afternoon, things were gone off the shelf because the people who had that mentality of, I'm going to get my Twinkies before they're gone, went and got the Twinkies. Right. And we've seen what happened. We talked about this last week and the week before to more ex- a greater extent. Look at the people that got hit by Sandy in the uh, the better neighborhoods of New York and New Jersey, the upper class neighborhoods. The ones where they don't think they need a gun. Right. The ones that think that they don't need anything because the government's always going to be there. Nothing's ever going to go wrong. And by golly, we eat at, you know, they go to Lavelle's every night, that kind of, you know, they're higher class people. They're not going to stoop down to the level that those people down in New Orleans did when... Katrina came through and trashed things and beat each other and steal and rob to stay alive, and they did. Those same people that one day were wearing a business suit going to work, the next day they had baseball bats trying to find something to eat. So I'm trying to wrap this back around to the last call and what we were talking about with law enforcement and stuff. I think if Fairbanks and it can survive, in fact, I love this community for some reason. I love being here. We in such a in that situation, we're all going to have to depend on each other. And it, it it might be unrealistic, but it'd be really cool if folks that are in law enforcement, folks that aren't in law enforcement, folks that are now in some government capacity, folks that aren't in government capacities did not freak out. And not because we had some kind of a iron fist in the town that put down and said, okay, now you have, you know, armed police running the streets with machine guns, knocking everyone down because everyone's freaking out, but because everyone's calm and we say, I have a little extra food. What can I do for my neighbor? I have a little extra food. What can I do for my neighbor? I have water. I have, it would be really cool, but the only way it would happen is if all of us. We're not in that situation. I you're think no longer the only a class. You're the an American. only thing the way that, that that would happen is if you shared some of the stuff you've been smoking this morning, Josh. Because I don't think there is any way that we are going to see the local law enforcement and the local officials not freak out. Were you here in 2004? Yeah. Do you remember the big fires? Oh yeah. Okay. The yep. fires literally they were right there at Haystack Mountain, right yep. on the outskirts of town, and people started calling our radio station asking us what they should do. It wasn't that that we were the first choice. Mm -hmm. It's that the other people that they tried to call, the law enforcement, didn't have any idea. They tried to call that emergency office that was on the books that they had over there at the borough, and no one was there. (laughs) So they called the radio station, and they're like, well, what should we do? So right there, live on the radio, what we did is we got the forest people on the air with them. I heard that. And we ended up up becoming a, a kind of a clearinghouse of helping people help their neighbors. And we had people calling in and offering, hey, if you live up there in the Haystack area, you can come to my house. I will let you in. I will give you a place to stay. And we and people started doing it. The next day, and so basically um, we did what a lot of people anticipated that the government was going to do for them. Government wasn't there. Government was completely caught with their pants down. Did a public service. And the very next day, we were the ones that were made out to be the bad guy. Mayor called a, police, or a press conference and basically called us out here on KFAR for stirring up trouble mm-hmm. because we didn't let the government do its job. Government wasn't doing its job. Well, you threatened We, them. we filled a void. No, no, it gets worse because then people started calling in and saying, hey, I have a backhoe. Hey, I have some shovels. Where is the fire? I will go right now and go fight it. Mm -hmm. And they were blocked because although the government could not manage to help the people get evacuated, they managed to set up a roadblock and would not let people go in to help fight the fire. The only people they would let in, and I kid you not, were those who had the union membership card and were on the payroll. Well, part of that, too, is the last thing you want people to understand is that they can get along without a borough government. The last thing you want is they can get along without the state government. And 
when it comes down to it, when, especially when we have real disasters like Sandy, you realize, yeah, you are actually better off not relying on them because they're just people. They're no different than you or I. The things that they get for emergencies, who do they grow it? No. They take it from someone else. Do they have this never-ending cash supply that because they're working? No. They've taken it from someone else. So, I mean, ultimately, the only way they exist is by taking from us. So the last thing they're going to do is let you go solve a problem without them being in charge of it because you might think, yeah, hey, why do we need them doing that in the first place? Ultimately, going back, <laughs> man, we are the rabbit hole kings. So anyway, the uh, back to the law enforcement thing. We're not against them. We all, if there is an economic collapse, I hope. I don't have a lot of hope for it, like uh, probability-wise. Mm-hmm. But man, it'd be nice if we just work together, work through it as as not United States citizens, but just Americans and neighbors. It, what you might want to think about doing is offering, uh, and, and maybe even put this offer out now, for anybody who is currently in law enforcement, that you personally may offer them a job as your personal security force when things collapse. Because when things collapse, they're not going to have a paycheck. Hmm. The government people will not have a paycheck. 70% of the people who live in this borough are employed by government at one level or another. Think about that number for just a minute. 70, can you imagine having a 70% unemployment rate? Hmm. That all of a sudden, 70% of the people here who get a paycheck will not be getting a paycheck? And you think about all, all the people on top of that who receive government assistance at one layer or another, people who get food stamps, people who get WIC people who get a, a veteran's pension, people who get retirement from the government, people who get their PFDs. Do you think the PFD program is going to continue to run when the government has collapsed? No. So think about the rate of suffering in terms of how many people are not going to have any income whatsoever. Yeah, and unfortunately... Well, I do think that it's a survivable situation because you don't actually need Federal Reserve notes to live, ultimately. But people are going to freak out. <laughs> people are going to freak out. I mean, that's that's the end of the story. Everyone's going to freak out and act like a bunch of jackasses, unfortunately. <laughs> when we don't have to, especially a community that's this small, even though 70% of the people work for the government one way or the other and in an economic collapse, there wouldn't be any money coming from them. We wouldn't have to act that way. I just hope that, uh, you know what I hope? I hope that citizens, serfs, people, don't act like idiots and freak out and demand that the government do something for them. And I hope that uh, on the law enforcement side, they don't freak out and demand or try to put up some kind of a dictatorial, you know, whatever they might be inclined to do or... What's the word? When you have uh, a lockdown. Mm-hmm. What is it? Curfew. Curfews or... Uh... Wow. Mm-hmm. You have a young... When the government Sen- shuts things, moment, yeah. things down and the president, you have martial law. Martial law. law right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a very good possibility that could happen. And hopefully... You know, Richard Mayberry talked about it. Hopefully law enforcement will take the correct steps to be uh, protectors of people's liberty and not just to be there for mm. the government. Because <laughs> we're going to have to work together. Well, okay, to okay, okay. Think about it for just a minute. How many people that you know that work for government went into government work because they had this deep desire to serve their fellow man versus how many people went into government work because that was either A, the only job they could find, or B, because it was offering better pay and better benefits than anything else in the private sector? Probably the only ones I could say would be some military guys I've met and some law enforcement guys I've met. I would say that that'd have to be it because I have met law enforcement that truly, I mean, they're doing their job because they actually care. They are out there, no doubt about it. There are guys in the military that truly 
they are there because they want to defend liberties of their fellow neighbor, of their parents, their family. They're getting used in a bad way, I think, but there, there's some there. But your average uh, guy that's driving the street, street sweeper, no, he's not doing it because <laughs> he doesn't want us to get chips in our windshields. He's doing it because he's got a dang good job, mm -hmm. just like the hostess guys. I mean, come on. Those guys, basically, there's 18,000 people have a job now because 6,700 of the uh, union drivers wanted better pay. They were asked to take an 8% pay cut which would have brought them down to an average 120000 a year. I know that's harsh, but that's a lot of money compared to everyone else in the United States and the world. It's twice, over twice my complete so income. Yeah, they everything put together. basically shut down, and hostess finally just said, yeah, okay, well, screw you guys. We're going to just quit. Well, and, and it wasn't like they were trying to punish the other workers. They didn't have an option. Right. When, they, when, when you are by law required... Right. To have the unions. <laughs> and, and by law, to have to follow. Incidentally, uh, once again, going back to, I know mm. I'm going to encourage people to read here, but no. the, the book by Ayn Rand, Atlas Shrugged, that is exactly what happened in that book. It was exactly, it was the domino that that started pushing everything over. Yeah. All right. That's too bad, because 18,000 people are out of jobs. 18,000. No. Well, that's, and that's on top of Bang. the other that's layoffs right. that were announced the day after the election. In terms of the people that were, I mean, they were, they had put so much that was faith. That thousands. And, no, it was tens of thousands. It right. was 40, 40 or 50,000 people. But they, the company owners had put so much faith in the political process and so much trust in this man, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney. If we can just hold on until we get Mitt Romney in, then everything's going to be better. Which is sad because uh, what they were doing was that... Uh Basically, they were looking at they were going to invest in a mm -hmm. false in another mm -hmm. business yeah, yeah, cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're going to put their money somewhere that wasn't was going to be a government bubble. Guys, and don't worry about it so much. I guarantee you, Obama's going to throw money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he'll create some bubbles and he'll create some business cycles where you can go invest your money somewhere. And if it lasts too long, it's going to bust and you'll lose everything. But if you're smart, you might be able to jump in there and grab a little while you can and jump out. Read the clipper ship. Oh, shoot, what is it? Another Mayberry book. Yeah, <laughs> Richard Mayberry. All right. Who's going to be on next week? Outstanding. I'm yeah. going to miss that. Oh, well, you know what? I can listen in Arizona because I've got my smartphone. Oh, with, with the, the special with the, app? With the TuneIn radio app. That's right. <laughs> Anywhere in That's the world. awesome. All right. You ready to go to the phones again? Yeah. All right. Let's Definitely. see if anybody's still there. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Jim. Jim, what's on your mind? <laughs> you guys, are, hey, uh, thank you for the show. It is fun plus educational. And, Hopefully um, entertaining. Like, yeah, entertaining that too. But um, well, I, I do demand that the Bennett sisters give us callers more time. I demand it, even though they're paying for the show. <laughs> Anyways, to I know long... it, it's bad because we get <laughs> ranting. That the phone is sitting right in front of my face. I look down and these buttons are flashing and flashing, and I get stu I get mesmerized, and I forget what they're for. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> keep droning on. <laughs> Sorry, it's your turn. <laughs> Go for it. That's okay. I'm going to be fast, but I do have a little story I want to share. And um, I'm sorry, your time is up. <laughs> yeah, it, it's police related, which you guys kind of got off the topic now. But anyways, this is the deal. We like to you go. Guys, back. I, I'm sure you guys re remember the um, the the gentleman that got arrested for FUI this past summer, floating under the influence. Oh yeah. Oh, that guy was picked up off the river because he yeah. was drunk while he was floating in an inner tube. Yeah. Yeah, it was totally yeah. crazy, and I was listening to Steve go off for a couple of weeks, and, and other callers, of course, not just Steve, and I was right with him. I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. Those goofy cops, what are they doing? What is that stupid, uh, you know, judicial system? What are they? Who do they think they are? And I was like right there, right? And so another couple of weeks went by, and, and they, people stopped talking about it. And all of a sudden, I get this, um, I was um, just at work, and I get this call from uh, people at work that hey, uh, the Judicial Services um, Office here in town has some paperwork for you. They'd like you to stop by and pick it up. I'm like, what the heck's that all about? They got a subpoena or something for you. I'm like, what the heck, you know? And I started thinking, well, I drive around a lot, so maybe, it's, and I see a lot of accidents and stuff, so maybe it was uh, related to something like that. So, um, so I go down there. I get the paperwork. I open up. I go. I, I go. I have no idea what this is about. I call the district attorney's office. They fill me in, and I'm totally blindsided. I'm like, 
I'm like, this is crazy. I can't believe it. And guess what? I witnessed that guy. I'm the guy who you guys are all complaining about. <laughs> it's a, the deal, the deal is never what I ever dreamed that the guy would have got arrested. Oh my but, gosh! But here I am along the river with my family. Where are here you now, so we can come hamstring? No, 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 no. <laughs> Hang on. I want to. I want to know why it was that he felt he, a moral compunction to call and report this unsafe behavior. This is radio gold. Yeah. Are you making sure this is being? Oh, this is being real. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Why'd you call? He, this is the deal. He was in. A, to- a little like little Fred Meyer floating raft, and the bottom line is, I after like running into the guy after talking, I hey, can you, you need some help? What's the deal? How's it going? Blah blah blah. No, he didn't want anything from me. And I was there with my family, but really, uh, and I don't, I'm just not going to mention other things. But with a clear conscience, I couldn't leave the guy. I just couldn't watch the guy go floating off again. That's how bad he was. <laughs> and so I said, I don't know what else to do, but never in my mind would I think the guy would have ever gotten arrested. Maybe, um, hey, you got to get out of the water. You're going to die. And we'll call your friends. We'll make you go home or something. I don't know. But I, with, seriously, with a clear conscience, I couldn't leave. Just let the guy float away. And I, and, uh, yeah, then, I bet. Know, no doubt. Anyways, mm-hmm. but so that's, that's the, awesome. That, as, as Paul Harvey would say, that's, that's the, the rest, rest of the story. story. You know, I, I appreciate your calling in and letting us know why it was. Because you know what, I have done that kind of thing myself, where I see something and I I know that I'm not going to be able to go in and stop that unsafe behavior. But I'm really concerned that my fellow citizen is going to hurt himself. The mystery has been solved. I understand. Yeah, I, underst- wow, I understand. I understand. Awesome. Uh, however, <laughs> I mean that does raise the bigger question in terms of who is my neighbor. When the Good right. Samaritan found the guy who'd been beaten up, right. you remember you remember the old story, uh-huh. he went and he took care of the guy's wounds himself, first and foremost, and then he entrusted him not to law enforcement. Right. He entrusted the guy to an innkeeper. Right. Right, but you, you're not going to just go drag the guy out of the river because he's going to beat you right. up or freak yeah. out or fall out and drown right in front of you, and then you'd go to jail. Yeah, and he did refuse help, but mm-hmm. uh, i just tell you, it was just one of those instances where, okay... I guess I'm going to call, but it really, the whole thing took me blindside me. I had no idea until I got the subpoena and called the DA, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I can't believe this. Anyways, <laughs> That's a uh, great story. I, I, thank, just thank you. Month. Thank you very thank much you. for the so call. Awesome. appreciate that. <laughs> it is, I mean, the whole thing wasn't necessarily that he got, mm-hmm. well, part of it was who the heck called, but I mean, it was an overreaction, yeah. we well, thought. To don't get you, arrested for Don't you it? think, though, at the point when he refused the help, when this good Samaritan offered, can mm-hmm. I get you something? Can I get you, you know, a ride or something because he's floating in this cooler? I don't want to see you drown. At the point when he refused the help, don't you think at that point he should have just walked away and let the guy go, even if he did end that's, up drowning? Yeah, that's a hard one. I mean, because what if he did drown? Then you'd feel bad the rest of your life that you were the guy that could have done something and... And the guy was inebriated, so he wasn't making good decisions anyways, but he was probably having a nice float, too. I don't know. That's a <laughs> right, it's a, it's a sticky wicket. It was just, I think, the end result got out of him because he got thrown in jail. The finger, I mean, come on. Pull him out, drag him out, you know, hit him with a baton a few times and call his friends and let him go. <laughs> 458 talk is the number... Good morning. All right, we've I mean, you would lines. do that even in, uh, yeah, people would, you know, I'm just trying to think of if it was the Wild West, you know, what would happen if, if in a community, they'd probably, they'd probably go out there and drag him out and say, all right, Tom, you know, you've done this enough times, we're going to drag you out of the water this time or something. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's just... Uh, that was a great story. I can't believe <laughs> that was awesome. Four five eight talk <laughs> is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Uh, this is Claudio. Claudio, what's on your mind? Hey, uh, you know, uh, I remember this that story the, about the raft, and I was reading the other day. Was a guy riding his horse in Kentucky? You know, and he had his pouch, and uh, <laughs> he got arrested because he was drunk to <laughs> <laughs> enjoy all his neighborhood, right? So he was right riding was while intoxicated, an RWNIA. Yeah, he got the, the you know, DUI. So. <laughs> and then I was that all the kids here was slowed in the ice, and it seemed like it was a big chunk of ice. It seemed like he was pretty safe, too. At least he thought he was safe, and he was having a good time. And he got arrested because of that, too. 
Yeah, I think the point really is that, you know, you don't have to actually arrest and incarcerate someone for that kind of situation. I mean, you shouldn't have to go pay a $2,500 fine because you're floating down the river drunk. No, because somebody has to pay because, you know what, it, it, when, whenever you call, I mean, you think about this as a good Samaritan. Anytime you call emergency vehicles, who's paying for the gas? Well, we are. And, well, exactly. Taxes. You know, and, and and we've put pressure on the fire services and on the police. So we, we don't want these unnecessary calls. I say we, the the taxpayers, the one who are ultimately paying for it. Mm-hmm. And so we put pressure on them to make these poor decision makers pay. Well, how do you make them pay if you don't charge them? Cash money. There you go. Claudio, thanks for the call. Appreciate right. it. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. All right, we've managed to clear the lines again. It's interesting riding you mentioned that fellow who got riding, because if you've ever driven through downtown Fairbanks, there are a number of streets over there uh, in my neighborhood, 6th, 8th, um, mm-hmm. Smythe, that just meander. In fact, my favorite intersection, remember uh, all of those streets there, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, all the way to 10th, those are parallel streets. My favorite intersection is the, the intersection of 6th and 8th. And I I, I, I was kind of joking around from some of the, the, the stories that I'd heard that uh, the, the streets of Fairbanks were laid out by a drunk riding backwards on a horse. And I was just joking around until I found out that that's not a joke. I got a call uh, on, on this program or on uh, actually on the Problem Corner from one of the surveyors who said that as a matter of fact, the people who surveyed Fairbanks, it was a well-known fact that these people would go out and get sauced when they were laying out the streets of <laughs> Fairbanks. So, you know, you're riding backwards, you're, you're drunk riding backwards on a horse, you know, back in the day, that's some interesting streets in Fairbanks, but now it'll get you put in a cage. Probably uh, ought to not use those uh, survey points, especially not. <laughs> Man. I just thought, you know, since, uh, given our uh, earlier conversation today, that this would be an appropriate song to close out the hour with. Just to freak out? Freak out! All right, you've got it on uh, KFAR. We're Local Talk Radio 660 and your AM dial streaming live at KFAR660.com. Coming up in the Fox News, we have another hour. Patriots Lament is coming up next. Deep. Right, welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. For the next hour, we are going to blow your mind. Wow. I mean, well, that song blows my mind. Hey, seriously. That song is awesome. Uh, Josh Bennett from Big Horn Enterprises here in the studio today. The, the, you know, just to make sure the people understand the arrangement here at KFAR, we like to make money. We are a, this is a privately held commercial radio station. You know, people who call in and demand that they have an opportunity to speak their mind. It, it happens uh, on during the week in Problem Corner. Uh, people who would call in and demand to have their time on problem or on uh, Patriots Lament, you have to understand, this is not your radio station. <laughs> this is this this radio station belongs to private investors, and they decide what they want to put on the air because people listen, and because people will then go and buy the products that are advertised. It is a business arrangement. Right. If you want to have a public access channel, you can call KUAC. And demand that you get your airtime up there. Yep. And since people would not pay to listen to us, mm-hmm. we had to pay for it ourselves. Well, you know, that's that's kind of an interesting way of looking at it. it, <laughs> it, it, it there are several different we ways. We couldn't get any sponsors. <laughs> Actually, all right, you, you didn't try. Oh, that's right. You didn't try to get any sponsors. And, and that's, uh, that is one of the ways that people do get things on the air, is that they come up with an idea a concept for a show. Yeah, this is definitely and, not our radio station. Right, exactly. We pay for a couple hours. That's right. Because oh. if it was... Hmm. No, yeah, you'd, you'd make a lot of changes around here. <laughs> this would be subversive radio. John Hannity. <laughs> John. <laughs> oh, man. Could you imagine having Peter Schiff instead of Sean Hannity? Actually, I can. We have Peter Schiff on on Sunday mornings now. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, we have him on. I, I managed to find a spot to put him on. He is now on from, I believe, 5 to 6. Seven or is it six to eight? I think six to eight on Sunday mornings, right oh. here on KFAR. It is a huh. it's a repeat show. It's like a, it's like uh, something from earlier in the week. Yeah, it's a refeed that we get off the satellite. But yeah, we have Peter Schiff on from six to eight every Sunday morning. Right. I didn't know KFAR. that. That's sweet. You know, b- literally, if the four people that listen to us out there, if there was actually more than that, it would be worth 
people in this community to pay for a spot every day. I mean, mm-hmm. cut an hour of Sean or whatever to have Peter Shift on. The guy is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And I think he would enrich people's mm-hmm. financial lives at the very and, least. And that right there is exactly the way to make a, a commercial radio station think about something yeah. like that, is if you came forward with a, a proposal and somebody said, hey, we would like to pay for, and it has to be a year. Remember, these are yep. the, the way the way things that work is you need a yearly contract in order for it to be financially doable. You, otherwise, we'd be constantly changing the program. It's about like 10000 a year probably yeah. would cost to do it, or maybe more than that. I don't know. But it, when, if you spread it out. If, if you, there's enough people mm-hmm. that just put a pot together, man, that would be awesome. And, and then you, you know, Tom Woods and, hosts and his show regularly. beautiful about that is that if you did that, I mean, we've got, especially in the network programs, we have a certain amount of barter space that we are guaranteed in which, you know, whether it's, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like the three-minute breaks that you hear, we get about 15 minutes in every hour on the shows like uh, Sean Hannity or Glenn Beck or anything else like Those that. Those are my so, favorite 15 minutes of their show, too. So, <laughs> But, I mean, if you think about it, if somebody did come up with a package of saying, hey, we want Peter Schiff on the air, then and, and you paid for the entire hour, mm-hmm. then you would also be able to put on, in the space of the local commercials, whatever commer- whatever you wanted to put on the air. Right. Whether it was something like we have here on uh, Patriot's Lament, where we have the kids doing the quotes of the Founding Fathers. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, if you wanted to have, if you have a church that you wanted to put a message out on. But, I mean, you think about what you could do with a three-minute spot. Bang, big mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, that's just something. If 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 somebody is really really committed to the idea of getting Peter Schiff or anybody else like that on the air, it is totally doable. All you need to do is just send me an email, and I'll, I I can sit down and explain to you how it would work and uh, what it would take to do oh, it. Oh man, it'd be fantastic. You know, I I was uh, my wife and I were watching his videos, YouTube videos a while back, right before the housing bubble, and. Everyone was ridiculing him on Fox News and all this stuff. Like, you, what planet are you from? What are you talking about? You're an idiot. I mean, literally, there's like seven guys on Fox Business News ridiculing him, and he's saying, "I'm right. I guarantee this is about to happen." He even called it within a couple months, and they laughed and mocked him, called him names. Every program he went on, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. All of them. They mocked him like crazy. Bang, it happened. And then you can watch videos right after that, and they'll have them on, and they just kind of go, oh, well, of course, you know, well, we didn't, uh, well, uh, mm, uh, he knows. Yeah, he would be great. And like I said, Tom Woods regularly hosts his show for him, who is another brilliant economist and historian. And if you're not on Liberty Classroom, come on, sign up. Go to patriotslament.blogspot.com. Hit the uh, Liberty Classroom button on the right-hand side and sign up. Enrich your life. You can download those MP3s and listen to them at any time. Like, I usually listen to them on my way to work, on the way home, all night long at home. I'm, well, I'm trying not to do that so much. But fantastic. My kids are listening to it as part of the school now, the uh, History of America. Right now we're in History of America pre-1877 and it is fantastic educate yourself everyone should educate themselves more and not go not necessarily go to university of fairbanks alaska i'm talking real education where you wouldn't need to go there i mean it's just like some of the books we've talked about um or uh economics in one lesson you will know more about economics than everyone you know Mm -hmm. In about three hours. And that sounds silly, but literally, you read that. Well, and you read people, Mayberry's books. People used to know more about basic economics mm-hmm. uh, back before, and I, you have to go back a ways, before the majority of people were forced through the public meat grinder. Right. I, I mean, the public school system. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about it, what does the public education do? Dumbs it, you down. It creates people who, at the end... The vast majority, now it is not. It is no longer, I mean, right now we are having a hard time getting 50% of the people to come out of the public schools with basic math. It's not, not even like 50% coming out with algebra. They can't do basic arithmetic right here in Fairbanks. And then you look at how many of the dropout right on top of that, of people who are not even finishing because they can't 
come to grips with basic math. Now, you add to that the basic literacy is going down in America. There is a reason for it. There is a reason for it. It's laziness. You know, you look at somebody like Alex Jones, he'll tell you, oh, the reason for the public education system to dumb us down is so that we can have our master come in and tell us what to, and, and you know, what he says makes sense mm-hmm. because you see it in the end result. But I think there's another, I think there's another side to it. I think it's laziness on the part of the parents. It is a lot easier to just send your kids off to school than it is to homeschool. Yeah, and but usually the parent has also gone through public school, and yes, if that's the only education they've received, that they ever knew, and they uh-huh. haven't self-educated themselves at all, then they think that they're on the right path and they're doing a good they're job. They're doing the best they can for their kids. And now you add on top of that the economic, what was perceived economic necessity. People have a hard time because they have to. They feel like they have to have two jobs. Mm-hmm. You know, the both mom and dad have to work, or they feel like they do. And then what do you do? You can't homeschool if both mom and dad are at work all day. Yeah, and if they would just read the clipper ship strategies, they probably wouldn't have to work as hard. Right. Now, Richard Mayberry. Exactly. Now, you take it a step farther here, and you look at how, I, I mean, I believe it's a, a whole, a, a, just a terrible downward spiral. That, that What ends up happening is that people going through the public school system come out on the other end. They're so disgusted by the learning process that they don't want to spend any time reading on their own. Mm-hmm. They don't enjoy reading. They don't want to educate themselves because they don't enjoy learning. What they want is to be ed- entertained. And told. What they want, exactly, just tell me, I mean, I, a lot of people call me up. Tell me who I should vote for, Steve. Really? Really? No. Not so many Not so many this Didn't year since I, so <laughs> since this I year. came out with saying that I'm not <laughs> voting. Uh, but, I, I mean, for literally decades... The last uh, last two decades, I've had people calling me constantly, saying, "Steve, who should I vote for?" Because they don't even want to put in the effort of researching the candidates and finding themselves. out what, what they wanted. And so, and they assumed you had because you interviewed them all. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> even though the interviews are always a big. But I, I was getting calls farce. like that before I was even in radio, just because I took the oh, time yeah. to find out what people believed. I took the time to look at their voting record. I, looked, I took the time, for instance, on Mitt Romney as a great example to actually look at his record as, a, as governor in Massachusetts. And the picture that was painted of him in the public eye is that somehow he's a conservative. Torrent quite so true. Not exact, not at all true. <laughs> it, it was a blatant lie. And now people are like, well, why did the Republicans stay home this year? Well, because you didn't put them, you didn't give them a conservative candidate. Yeah. We got a text from Abe. He said that public schools put out very good taxpayers. Oh, and basically nice. that's what it comes down to. They want you to be subservient to the state. I mean, the bottom line, that is true. It's exactly what they, exactly what the school system's for. I mean, that's historically lot, they've talked about that. Well, I, and it's <laughs> interesting too. It's a, one of the chief criticisms that are leveled against homeschoolers: that, well, your kids aren't going to get socialized. Mm-hmm. Do you really want your kids socialized? No. Think about it. I mean, if you're in business and you can only talk to people of your age level, you, cause you can't you can't talk to anybody older and you can't talk to anybody younger because they're not in your grade. Is that what you want for your business? Yeah, and how smart do you get being surrounded by people that are just as smart as you are? Generally speaking, um, it, water dumb water effect. seeks its own level. Right. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna end up finding that you're not gonna be challenged in your thinking it, 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 you, socializing your kids is probably one of the worst things you can possibly do for them mm-hmm. it, 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 i do not want my kids hanging out hanging around with a bunch of kids their same age because i know what's going to happen they're going to end up doing stupid stuff well they're definitely not going to get any wisdom from that well i mean even <laughs> even when my kids hang out with your kids occasionally we have to yeah. give them a little bit of adult supervision yes no Occasionally, doubt. we have to come in and suggest, you know what? Probably not a great idea to tie that firecracker to that dog. And we both trust each other's children. Right, yeah, exactly. But at the same time, yes, very good point. To send them out with complete strangers and say, hey, go hang out with these people that we don't know and learn their way of speaking and learn their way of dressing and learn their mannerisms because you want to fit in. Go do that and be light while you're doing it. I've made... Choice word, made. My kids go to work with me. 
and they've had to interact with our mechanics and work with them and under them. And they've gone to work on base. They've had to work with a foreman and a supervisor, and they've had to interact with the customer that we're actually working for because they usually freak out that the kids are there, so they come out literally and speak to them. And uh, that's that's education. But back to self-education, I'm going to throw the three books out there again. Whatever Happened to Penny Candy, The Money Mystery, and The Clipper Ship Strategies. If you would read those, I promise you, you'd be like... Um, what was his name on uh, Mr. Anderson? You'd be just like Mr. Anderson on The Matrix. You'll see it all in a totally <laughs> different light. I mean, you would literally be like you're looking through at the codes instead of looking at the at what your eyes are seeing. You know, you're not going to be fooled anymore. You read those three books, and you could literally read all three of them in one day. Neo. <laughs> you could read them in Offering one you day. The red pill or the blue pill. Right. But I'm not joking you. You read those three books, you could read them all in one day. They're that simple. And you will look at everything, everything economically, totally different. And you'll realize how much of your life actually is based on economics. Yeah. That's what will really blow your mind because all of a sudden you'll realize almost every decision, every decision you make, human action, is an economic decision. Every decision you make. It's pretty interesting. But so... And I'll even give you the books. Yeah. I mean, my brother and I buy these books and hand them out for free, simply because we would like and people I, to get smarter. I, I can say on the other thing, on the other side of the equation too, is that even though these books are simple, they're not dumbed down. No. They're, they're, I mean, they, they'll make you think, no matter what your level of education, no matter what your 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 personal abilities Sorry. are. You know, I uh, people may, may not understand this about me because I'm in such a low grade job here, the hosting a radio show. But I was the valedictorian in my high school. I went on to college and managed to cram a four-year degree into five and a half years. Mm -hmm. That's hard. And then then after uh, after my my time in the Army, where I was a linguist, by the way, I speak five languages besides English. Well, no. If you you count English. Is that adding or subtracting? Yes. Either way. uh, On top of that, I went back to school after I got out of the Army and got my master's in business communication. So I am educated I'm fairly intelligent. In fact, when I was in the Army, I consistently, the criticism that I got over and over again was that the officers were having a hard time understanding my reports because I was writing at such a high level. So they they started requiring me, when I do my report, to run a grammar check when I was done. Is it, it'll, it'll tell you at what level, what education level you're writing at. And I had to, uh, I hate to use the word dumb it down, but I had to simplify Explain it. my reports Explain down it. down from the graduate level down to an eighth grade level because that's what the officers had. Yeah. That's what that's what the, the people who were reading my reports, that was the level of educa- education I had to write to or else they wouldn't, they were having a hard time actually understanding what I was reporting. Yeah. So that being said, when I read Mayberry's books, I find myself enlightened, not talked down to. It's uh, they're they're very good. High recommendation. Yeah, I my kids are going through them, and uh, they understand them. And uh, I've read them and was blown away by them. Like you said, it's not dumbed down. It's made for you to understand. They're fantastic. I mean, you literally. I'm not joking when I say that. You read those three, your life will be so enriched from those. You'll look at everything different instantly. I'm not kidding. You'll never look at anything the same. You'll realize just how much inflation affects your life, how much economics affects your life. You'll Everything the government does with monies, with uh, business cycles and deflations, and um, you'll understand velocity and the opposite of velocity, all these things, and wow, it'll change your life. So... We got calls. Three of them on hold right now. Four, Hopefully. five, eight talk is the number. Good morning, <laughs> caller. Who's this? Uh, good morning, this is Eric. Eric, what's on your mind? Uh, well, I was just thinking uh, about what you're talking about, homeschooling. Uh-huh. Um, I'm in a situation where I uh, it would be difficult for me to homeschool, but I, after my experience with the public school, I dare not ever put my kids back in there. So we do, there are some fine uh, uh, private schools. Uh, a really nice one is North Pole Christian School, and we it's uh, a change of night and day. Yeah. You know, they, they 
don't have a, a lot of funding. It, t- it takes a lot for us to um, financially do it. On the other hand, we don't make a lot of money either. So it's a, it, you can say it's a sacrifice, but mm-hmm. no, I was just listening to you about what you were saying about your history and education. I'd rather pay now than pay later. You know, they get to the point where they're ready for college, but they're not ready for college. Yeah. And um, so that's point. just the you, thought. You know, yeah, you know, right really now, right now uh, colleges are showing a preference for homeschoolers, by the way, because mm-hmm. they know that the kids that are coming out of the public school education are not going to do as well. My brother also, actually sends his children, one of my brothers sends his kids to the North Pole Christian School, and they really like it. I mean, and, oh, and even yeah. if, if people have to, you know, they feel like they have to let their kids go to public school because whatever situation, that's fine. But your job doesn't end when they go to school and when they come home. There's still things you can teach them. I mean, spend a little time, spend a half oh, an hour a day. <clears throat> I, for example, you know, the, they will teach the very, very fundamental um, outlook on the Bible, mm-hmm. and then I let them say, well, this is what they are is also here. Evolution is still a theory, however, you need to look at it from both ends. And so you have a more critical, actually more critical uh, view about uh, information. This is not just uh, spoon-fed. It has to be, oh, wait a minute, it's in print. That doesn't make it true. Right. That's a really important thing right No, that's there. fantastic. Having, critical think, crit- having a critical mind and not... I mean, some people take that the wrong way. It, it isn't that you are criticizing someone, but you think critically. And that's so You're important because we don't do that oh, anymore. I, no, exactly. And look at what's happening here, for instance, with the global warming issue. What What is the reaction of those who are true believers of global warming to anyone who has got a critical approach? Anyone who it's asks... Just attack. Exactly. Anybody who asks for uh, some more evidence, anybody who asks for anything to, anything now to substantiate your claim, since the science is coming back and proving you wrong... There's, their eyes roll, and they just go, ah. Exactly. And, that's about it. Yeah. And, and, they, and they resort to name-calling and personal attacks, because their, their theories are not based on facts. They are, they are basing their entire belief system on basically their religion... Of Gaia, Earth worship. Oh, and, and, Earth and, and, worship is what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah critical thing. That's a great call. Hey, that's wanted, a really good point. Go ahead. I wanted to ask on the um, on your website are those three books uh, that you were just discussing because you got my interest up in them. I like to read them to my kids. Um, are they uh, posted on the website? Um, on our website, I think he's at he's on the right side. Richard Mayberry. If you hit his uh, name, it'll go to his website, and then you can find the books there. And, and if the, you buy them directly from him, it's the cheapest way to get them. And the Patriots Lament website is PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. And Aaron may have at his store. He should still have some Penny Candy books. I mean, if you just read Penny Candy and Whatever Happened to Justice, those two books alone, I think, they're fantastic. By the way, if you go to our the, the station website, KFAR660.com, right there at the top of the page, uh, you, as you scroll down, you'll see into the announcement section. Check out the Saturday morning wake-up call and Patriot's Lament. If you click on either of those hyperlinks, either the Saturday morning wake-up call or Patriot's Lament, it will take you, uh, the Saturday morning wake-up call takes you to the YouTube channel, which is Radio Free Fairbanks. And the Patriots Lament takes you to the PatriotsLament.blogspot.com, and there on the right-hand side, you'll see the top uh, underneath the radio show part is the very top link is Richard Mayberry. Mm-hmm. But then it goes on uh, Stefan Molyneux, the Daily Anarchist, Tom Woods, the Dollar Vigilante, uh, the Ludwig von Mises Institute. All of these are amazing links. And they're full. Those those are informational links, and they're full of free stuff. Mayberry sells his book still, and if someone can't afford him, email us at our uh, email there, and we'll send you one. We'll get you one. I mean, because that's, that's why we're here. The whole point is we would like people to educate themselves. And it's fantastic that you want to get those three books and read them to your kids, because I'm, I'm telling you, you'll be better off for it. They'll be better off for it. And well, I just can't I really say enough en- about them. I really enjoy your show, and I'm really impressed that you're putting up the bucks to do this. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Oh, Thank thanks. You. Appreciate Thank you. that. Also, also, if you get, if anyone, the uh, Liberty Classroom is a pay per year. You have to pay money for it every year. I think it's like a hundred bucks. If you can't afford it, I've talked to Tom Woods and asked for his permission, and he's given me permission to let people use my access. 
to get on there and download the the, uh, the classes. Oh, nice. So if you want to email me, I'll send you the passcode to get on to Liberty Classroom. The only thing I would ask is that you don't go on the forums and say that you're me and ask really dumb questions. I mean, if they're good questions, that's great, but don't get on there and say, <laughs> Tom Woods, you're an idiot, because that would be embarrassing. But definitely would, uh, if you want to download those classes, and it's um, history, all of American history from the very beginning, like when the Cavaliers came, when uh, the Spaniards came over, an excellent history, um, world history from the beginning till now. I mean, it's Austrian economics, a complete course. You'll be an Austrian scholar at the end of it. They have a course on logic right now. You'll be the most critical thinker and debater in the world. You've got it on Patriots Lament right here on KFAR's Local Talk Radio 660 on your AM dial. Welcome back to the Patriots Lament right here on KFAR's Local Talk Radio. I'm the monkey behind the machine, Steve Floyd, and I'm here basically because I'm a capitalist and they offered me uh, some compensation to be here. I mean, this is what the whole point of uh, capitalism is, is that you don't get guilted into doing something for free. You get rewarded for doing something, even if you enjoy doing it. <laughs> I mean, why yeah, Why do you have a job? Why, why do you go to work? Do you go to work because you're a slave and because you don't have any opportunity to do anything else? Or do you go to work because you enjoy what you do and somebody else likes the fact that you do it and is willing to pay you to do it? I mean, isn't that... That's pretty basic. I mean, that, that's that's the that's the the main reason. If you if you have a job that you hate, how much money does it take to make you a whore? I'm just, you know what I'm saying? At what point, if you are doing something that you would not do on your own, right? I are, are you just basically selling your services to the highest bidder? Is that a harsh thing to say? I like to go after the highest bidder. <laughs> but at the same time, I have to be the lowest bidder. Yeah, but you are also doing something that you enjoy doing. And yes, you're, and, you're, and you are doing it because you have uh, the desire to do it. You're mm-hmm. not being forced to do it. Right. And you're not, you know, I yeah. mean, that being said, and it's kind of an uncomfortable. <laughs> and, you know, we've got a couple of teenage boys now in the, 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 the room looking at me like, oh, he said the W word. What is that? I, I got a uh, email from a friend. I'm going to post it on the website later on today about school reform from Gary North. And it's, uh, whoa, boys, whoa. It's really good. So anyways, hit the website later. It's called School Reform First Cut the Funding. And Gary North, if you guys don't know who he is, is fantastic. I mean, he's an older gentleman now. And very wise. Whenever he, he writes stuff, I go, wow, this guy is brilliant. And he really is. <laughs> Carrying North. Anyways, um, see, I was just going to... We, we do have a oh, couple of lines oh, on, on hold if you'd like to see, go. See, I was back in that flashing right. light mode. Now. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning. Hey, who is this? This is Sessa. Sessa. Good morning. What's Sessa? Zdravstvite. Katila. Yesterday, I... Very much enjoyed the program. Malajet Ochenhoi show. Anyway. Spasiba, Bolshoi. And the, and the, the thing about the school was that uh, every day they take you away. Never say in which way you decide how you ride the tide. They pretty much um, um, channel people through in order just to go uh, make a get. They don't go to education to get educated. They go to get a job to make the money. And it's all um, given to them as to get, a, you know, the best job, to be the best whore pretty much is how they put it because it's not the, the enjoying and the, of the craft that you, that you um, put in your person to, to be a great um, um, addition to the world or yourself even. It's not even about making yourself better and good. It's about making that dollar it's it's preparing everybody to sell out for the highest bid rather than become the person that they want to be. And so I agree totally with you, but 
yesterday's program was just great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. By the way, if anybody missed yesterday's program, we had a special on, a, starting at 11, a two-hour special about Ayn, or not about Ayn Rand, but featuring Trump. the words of Ayn Rand. Uh, the, the very first segment was what is the proper role of government. It went on from there to talk about uh, how capitalism would be defeated, and then the, the larger question of what is capitalism. And that and all of that, I found all of it on YouTube so if you are interested in learning more or hearing again the Ayn Rand material, you can just look it up on YouTube, right. just so you know. Hey, thanks for the call, Sus. I appreciate it. Merci. Uh-huh, absolutely. Good morning, caller. This is Patriot's Lament. Who is this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Uh, Matt. Matt, what's on your mind? I, I try not to have much on it, Steve, because it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I, I, I couldn't over, help but overhear you guys are talking about capitalism. What is the topic on capitalism today? Well, actually, uh, the, the the capitalism issue that anyway, came out of the break, talking about how I'm a capitalist, that I uh, believe that I should be rewarded for what I do, and I don't work for free, and I don't, uh, I'm not going to get guilted into giving away my labor for free, uh, and that that is the true basis of capitalism is that people have a free exchange, that whether it's uh, I have made this item and you want that item that I have made, or I am going to go and work for you digging a ditch, whatever it is, I am trading my labor, my materials, my whatever to you for something that I also consider of value, that we are not being forced into that transaction. Well, a couple couple of things. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who is this again? Matt. Ah, how are you doing, Matt? Pretty good. Thanks for calling in, bro. I guess a couple... So, um, Steve Floyd is the one that said you're, you say you're a capitalist? I do. Okay, but... It, <laughs> I think I this mean, is going to be a subversive call. No, it's not a subversion call. Oh, okay, go. But it, it's, I'm, I'm curious, though, because, like, in capitalism, um, you know, you, you're, you're also getting rewarded for having a ton of kids and uh, under Steve's system. But the reason I called was, you know, we talk about like whoring yourself out or this or that, but the you know people look at the function of of minimum wage as you know being able to make ends meet or whatever. And I've always looked at it as minimum wage is a is the price that's set for an individual not to go into business for themselves. And I think that corporations, in a large part, have found that um, this is all they have to pay for an individual not to go out and risk on their own. And secondly, instead of, because you guys were also talking about education as well, secondly, instead of people making the hard choice and buckling down and getting a good education to earn a higher wage, uh, corporations have found that it, that people are more willing to take on two minimum wage jobs than to just put in a few extra years of studying or working hard to have, have a, a job that pays them twice as much to begin with. Now, hang on a second, Matt. I, I, before I let Josh wade into this one, uh, and, and then I'm going to give it over to Josh here because he's an exact example of what I'm talking about or what I'm the about Josh to talk Bay? about. You can, Matt, <laughs> you can go out there and get yourself that higher education, but unless you're going into the field of being a doctor, right now your higher degree doesn't mean a pile of jack beans. Right now the highest paid jobs are the people who have skills, the people who can operate heavy machinery, the people right. who know not just how to dig a ditch, but where to dig a ditch. And, and that's, and Josh, where you come in, because how much education do you have? How many uh, years of college did you go to? None. And, and yet, okay, but, where, does but, your, where does your success come from, Josh? Digging holes in the right place. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Listen, Driving a truck. Okay, but you're trying to obfuscate my words of... of um, I think you were right on the money. Say, what you well, said right, is but, but, exactly but right. Say, when I said education, I, I don't mean sitting in a classroom and textbook type stuff. It's not limited to that. There there are many avenues of an education yep. beyond beyond school. And so even though Josh may not have a formal education, he he certainly has an education. He learned those things somehow, but that was through his own hard work and dedication. And what I'm saying is. We have we have individuals who have chosen not to finish school, mm. and True. 
to me, I have a difficult time in feeling any moral obligation to an individual who has chosen not to finish school as opposed to an individual who um, cannot finish school. So I guess as an extreme example, if an individual I, – I understand both of your positions on on um, capitalism and, and um, limited or no government – but I, I understand society's argument when they say, like, an individual with severe scoliosis or spina bifida or Down syndrome that can't get work, or or someone with severe Down syndrome and can't finish a, finish their education. To me, that is a completely different argument than an individual who just decided, I, I don't want to finish high school. I want to go get a cheap job and buy a car. Yeah. I mean, so. If an individual is not going to utilize, A, what their abilities are, and B, the things that are provided to them through society, whether you agree with them or not, uh, um, once they've made that choice, I don't feel any further obligation to them. Hmm. So an individual, even though you don't agree with public education, if an individual chooses not to accept that free education, and, well, it's free to that. I got people arguing with me in the back. Anyway, if, if people choose not to utilize what what is offered to them, then right, they I, made I don't, their own bed. Right. Then I feel. Then I have a real hard time with with this perpetual obligation to those individuals. Yeah, and that is one of the things that Ayn Rand goes off on. The, the, oh no, I understand. One of the reasons why we put that special on the air yesterday was because I think that she really. I mean, man, she gets just gets harsh with people about this idea that somehow we have any kind of obligation to our fellow man on a governmental level. Well, and again, I think it comes down to intent versus result. I understand and agree with the intent of some of these programs. Mm-hmm. But I don't believe that the I don't believe that it is that they match the result anymore. So I for example, if if someone's running into financial hardships um, because of unemployment or prolonged health care issues or whatever, and they need some help financially with their children, that's one thing. But if somebody just happens to have lots of kids um, and, and then chooses to take help because of that, I don't agree with that. I don't think that that's the same situation. I mean, Josh, do you believe that your definition of a capitalist with eight kids matches Steve Floyd's definition of a capitalist with seven, with his seven? Hmm. I like how you're trying know. to turn us against yeah, each no, other I, here I, because, I you know what, Matt? I'm not trying to... No, 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 Matt, trying, no, I, I want to... I, I, mean, I know that you have a problem with me taking the WIC coupons... And I understand why you have no, a problem no, 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 with it. No, no. I However, I need, I mean, look, why would I, I not a, take something that's being offered free? I don't have a problem with it. I accept I'm the permanent curious. fund every year, and I don't I'm do just, anything to qualify for that, except right, live I, here. I don't, I don't have, I personally don't have a problem with it whatsoever. I think it's fine. I'm just asking how you delineate between the two. How do you? It's called uh, cognitive dissidence, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I under you know I, I look I fully I fully accept that by accept by ex- taking any form of government aid whether it is and here's here's something that I know it, it pisses people off for me to say this but I don't see any difference between somebody taking a WIC coupon or taking a permanent fund dividend you don't do anything to earn either one of those. Okay. The right, only- and I don't have a and I don't have a problem with either one. I'm just curious as to I, I'm always. I'm always curious how you differentiate between the two. Now, here, like, here's, the, here's the thing. I, I don't give away my labor for anything. That's why I'm a capitalist. That's why I call myself a capitalist. You cannot get me to come out and work someplace free. Even on this show. Even on this show. All right? <laughs> I, I make Josh pay me to be here. All right? Yeah. That, that, is, that, is, that has how much of a capitalist I am. However, if somebody is going to offer me something free, and all I have to do is put my hand out and I get something free put in. I'm a nice trained monkey. I'll take free. So, see, I don't so work I, for free, but I will take free. So, so if I steal a loaf of bread from my neighbor and give it to you, 
that's okay because then you're free. your government as long as it's a government program <laughs> by, by, by which you, by which you are stealing that loaf of bread from my neighbor. yeah this one could go around and yeah, around no, I'd absolutely. like to actually go back to something you said when you first called it was a great point on the uh, minimum wage yeah. mm-hmm. you're you hit that right on the nose people look at minimum wages that you know we've had I've heard people on your show Steve mm-hmm. um, local representatives and they lauded how great it was and blah 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 because it's done so much for people and I asked them I called and asked them I said then why isn't the minimum wage fifty dollars an hour mm-hmm. if it's so great for these people why isn't it fifty here I'll say one more thing and then I'll go here, the, the the big fat one of the big fallacies with the minimum wage is it is detrimental to individuals who have chosen a higher education because for example say minimum wage is fifteen thousand dollars a year okay yeah and and if you a college graduate or individual with skilled trained labor, say they start at thirty thousand dollars a year. So that means their training is a difference of fifteen thousand a year. So if you raise minimum wage arbitrarily, say you make it to twenty thousand dollars a year, well now you have just diluted that education by five thousand dollars a year. Yep. You've made that that education worth five thousand dollars less now. But again, corporations and everyone else has figured out that. Instead of people living within their means, they are now willing to have husband and wife work, or husband has two jobs and the wife works, or, you know, and and I'm not saying it's easy to make ends meet, but the bottom line is, um, I know people who do. You're a good example of stuff like that. You don't, you have gone after... They don't buy new cars. They don't buy, they don't get to go on vacations, but that's the choice they made. And that's the discrepancy between those who work three jobs or those who chose a higher education and earn more money than the people who dropped out of high school, didn't take advantage of the things that were offered to them, and now expect a, a perpetual leg up because of it. Right. The the expectation part, to get something for free when they had an opportunity in the beginning. Some people get out of school and do quite well. Um, by choice, because they say, you know what, I am ready to whatever. Well, it's an ounce, go of, off and they ounce do of prevention, found a cure type thing. Yeah. I mean, Stay I, in school or, or I don't care. <laughs> I, I quit when I was, basically stopped homeschool when I was 17. If I was done, I was like, okay, okay I know what I want to do. I was going to go. There's a difference between somebody stopping going to school and not continuing to become educated. Right. Two totally separate issues. Education and school are two different things, no doubt about it. Well, and so same thing with intelligence and education. Vastly different concepts. Education is one thing, but I know a lot of educated idiots. Mm-hmm. Intelligence is a whole different deal. Yep, exactly. There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. People can know a lot of things, but they can also be not very smart. And there's a difference between capitalists and socialist takers. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. I appreciate that. Thanks for calling, that. Matt. You know, actually, I'm a, I'm a capital socialist taker as it's ist. Man, that's a new one. Yeah, exactly. Just put it all together. Four five eight dog is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, is that me? It might be you. It depends on who it is. Hey guys, this is Abe. Hey. Abe, Abe Froman, <laughs> Sausage King of Chicago. Yes, yep, go, that's go, me. go ahead, Abe. Oh man, uh, I guess first of all we should talk about Red Dawn, huh, Josh? <laughs> we, no, we don't have to do that. As long as you watched it, we're good. Okay, so um, so so I guess uh, listening to Matt's call uh. Kind of is what prompted me to con- or to call in, and uh, on on both the uh, issue of uh, public education and minimum wage. First of all, minimum wage is a perfect example of the government trying to help somebody, and what they're doing is artificially making a, making a commodity, aka wage, be worth more than what it actually is. So the demand for wage is actually out there, but but the price artificially offsets what's actually available. I mean, you have people who want jobs, but at the same time. Um, minimum wage boosts the cost of everyone else's jobs up. It, it is similar to how Matt was talking about the fact that, you know, uh, when you arbitrarily push the jobs that, aka, support, you know, everyone needs a house, everyone needs needs cleaning, everyone needs labor, everyone needs the basis of, you know, the quote unquote lower skill sets. When when there's nobody doing those things, it actually pushes it pushes everyone else up, and it also creates a whole differential to where everyone's saying, oh, well, I want to become a doctor. I mean, you have 50,000 people who want to be doctors, but nobody wants to clean the halls of the, you know, surgery room. Um, so basically, I guess I guess the bottom line of my call is that it's 
again, the government's just stepping in and, and messing with the supply and demand factor of what the market really wants to do, where you obviously have people who want to work and can't. And then the other thing is, is uh, specifically with public education, it's the exact same thing. Kids aren't going to school anymore because they recognize the fact that they're not getting anything out of it on the other side. They're literally saying, you know, somebody's, somebody's um, handing them a moldy loaf of bread and saying, here, here's some bread, eat it. And they're like, this is garbage. I'm not getting anything out of this. I want something that's, you know, actually there. And uh, Right. And I, the sad part is that they're looking to the government to give them exactly. the non-moldy bread, even though they haven't realized that the fact that the government is involved in the economy in the first place. Right. Like we've said this before. We've been successful in America. The economy's done well despite the government, in exactly. spite of the government. It still exactly. is going along. I was it would be talking to, amazing if it would just stop. I was talking to somebody the other day, and uh, and they said, well, you know, part of the fact that uh, the reason America is so great is because we had such little uh, government intervention into our market, and, and for the most part, you know, the uh, the free market was allowed to do it, and that's how we got the wealth that we got today. And, I, and, I, and my response to them was, well, then if that's the case, that it was minimal government intervention, then imagine how much better it would be if there was no government intervention. No joke. It's like, you know, I mean, if, you're, if, you, if your argument is, hey, you know, America's great because we had limited government, but, you know, now it's time to fix it and we need some more government to fix it. It's like you literally just blew your own comment out of the water by saying, oh, we need more government to fix the fact that we had limited government and, you know, and it was really good, but, you know, it's just not good anymore. Yeah, and what you need to do is go on to Liberty Classroom and study the class eight. American history, 1877 to now, and start at uh, Wilson in World War One, and you'll see economically how we changed so quickly from having basically a non-interventionist economic mm-hmm. policy to a very interventionist economic policy. And since then, how many yep. booms, busts, cycles have we gone through, depressions, recessions, on and on and on, has all been since we had the government... And it really started around World War One. Yeah. Force itself into the economy. Oh, look at look at just even in Alaska, just in Alaska, how different the economy is now compared to the way it was 50 years ago. Yeah, no joke. How, how much food do we produce here in Alaska now? Oh, mm-hmm. nothing. And the funny thing is, is a uh, little known fact. I think it was the uh, late 70s, early 80s. Alaska was the largest producer of potatoes in the United States. Alaska wow. was the largest producer of potatoes in the United States. I mean, now I I think that part of that fact is the fact that there's a lot of uh, government and you know government subsidies subsidies in act- agriculture. But at the same time, it is a fact that we were producing more potatoes than Idaho was. So that's hard yeah. for me to believe being an Idahoan. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you, like, you know, but it, it used to also be part of the Alaskan culture that everybody had a little potato patch. Yeah, because yep. it was part of what kept you through the winter be a good idea yep. to start that yeah, oh back. yes it would <laughs> yes, it, now here, here's the thing here's another great example of this you know the, the women infant and children the wick coupon thing that we talked about earlier you know they used to pay here in alaska for any milk you could go out and get a gallon of any milk the problem was is that the local dairies like the northern lights mm-hmm. down yep. in delta and there was another one um matanuska matanuska made that their their milk was more expensive than the mm-hmm. national than the national Safeway or Fred Meyer brands that were being shipped in, yep. uh, and one of the main reasons they were more expensive is because it's more expensive to feed the cows here. Oh, it's more ex- way more. Okay, it's more expensive for our, all of the different aspects of the actual day to day operations of keeping those cows alive in Alaska versus down there on those mass farms where you've got the chemicals and everything else keeping the cows alive yeah. and keeping them producing. Uh, yep. And and so it was costing so much. For the state of Alaska to pay for people, the, even just the women, pregnant women or nursing mothers, and the babies, the little kids, it was costing so much just for them that they stopped paying for the local milk. Now yep. now the WIC coupons are only good for the store brands, like the Fred Meyer Safeway generic brands. The cheap stuff, the stuff that says W on it Ex- for WIC. Exactly. And, and with, with that happened, now it is forced Matt Nuska made out of business. Yep. Because they're not yep. subsidized, which they, is the correct thing. They shouldn't be subsidized. I mean, why why make a false economy? I mean, that, right, was, but, a, that was a false bubble, mm-hmm, basically. Exactly. People were pouring money into something that was not real. When the government subsidy yeah. stopped, they all went bankrupt. And, and yeah, I, Exactly. And, 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 go ahead. Go ahead, Ed. 
and this is and this is where the false idea of you know buy local is is such is such a frustrating thing to me because it's like you know what hang hang, hang on a second if if you buy local then what you're saying is that you don't agree with specialization and really us us as Alaskans we have to look at what we have up here that we are better at than anywhere else in the nation. And we don't have to be better at raising dairy cows. We're already better at mining or oil or, a, you know, a bunch of other things. And if the government would get out of our way and specialization could, could, could really in, entrench itself in the market, then there's still going to be people who are providing, you know, uh, all natural, you know, un, or non-hydrogenated milk. I mean, it's because I, 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 I want it. So if, so obviously, if I want it, there's market demand, and if there's more market demand, somebody's going to produce it for you, and it will be cheaper when the government can get out of the way. You know, I mean the the uh, whole buy local thing is, you know, it's like, well, it's healthier milk; it's just better milk. It's like, well, the irony is, is to produce healthier milk, you know, I mean, there you either a have to take government subsidies or <laughs> more people will have to want it. Inc- yeah, yeah. Incidentally, the, the FBI is now looking into the operations that Matt made. Because of the government subsidies that the Matanuska Dairy was taking, uh-huh. and the uh, well, basically there's allegations of criminal wrongdoing on oh, top of everything else. Of course, <laughs> I mean you got government money involved. I mean we think that it's going to be any different when this uh, local utility happens. I mean government, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, as soon as the government starts putting money that the market hasn't demanded to be put there, it's it's going to get unhealthy, and it's just going to go. The only people who lose is the people who need it in the first place. It's people who are purchasing it. It's yeah, just yeah. ludicrous. Thanks, Andy. We're going to get rolling, dude. Appreciate we got the call. A couple more people, and I still haven't even got to do my rant today. Oh, we got to go quick here. Good morning, right. caller. Quick. This is Tim. Tim, go quick. Uh, I. It was either. 5,000 year leap or why wa- why wages increase, but I got a little tidbit that we're like 5% of land mass, 6% of the population, and we're producing 50% of the world's manufactured goods, and that was in 1913. Wow. Yep. <laughs> and that changed a lot. Thanks for the call. And Are we out of time? We've got about a minute. Okay. I didn't get to rant today, so I'm going to just throw it out there for people to think about over the week. Last week, Obama praises the Gaza ceasefire. And the part that I wanted to bring up was the White House said, the president made clear that no country can be expected to tolerate rocket attacks against its civilians. Yeah, nice. Think about that over the week, what the president said. No country should put up with people doing rocket attacks inside their country, killing their civilians. Oh, wait, wait wait, a second. Unless they're Pakistanis. What about, Yemenis, what about Pakistan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about, Af- what about Yemen? I wrote something about it on the blog. You ought to check it out because it makes, I think, an ironic point. Patriotslament.blogspot.com. Yeah. And, and uh, patriotslament at gmail.com, z- or at gmail.com's email, Radio Free Fairbanks on YouTube. Email us. We'll send you books if you can't buy them. Email us. We'll help you get on Liberty Classroom. Whatever we want. We want to help out. Next two weeks, you'll have a different trained monkey behind the board. Richard Mayberry, next week. Fairbanks is listening. Talk radio for the interior. 660 AM.